Mujin's parents speak out again. Eyelet's name gets dragged into this beef again. The Blackpink versus 21 feud gets revived again. Actually, 21 and Blackpink's beef has been resolved and I predicted it in a dream. All that today and more on this episode of Totally Legit K-pop News with me, Angelina. I am so, so sorry for missing Friday's video. Number one, I was sad that I wasn't at the 21 concert. Number two, I broke out. And number three, well, actually, I think that's enough to take anyone down. But the truth is, none of that would have stopped me from bringing you your much-deserved K-pop news. There just wasn't any, actually. <laughs> there was nothing. I was so heartbroken at the thought that I disappointed some of you. I even texted my mom and she... <laughs> This was her response. You are not to blame. The world is to blame. I mean, seriously, where are the scandals? <laughs> oh my God, mom. That did actually make me feel better because it's true. I can only do so much. <laughs> but without further ado, let's get into today's Monday video, which happens to be really juicy. A lot has happened. Some super exciting, heartwarming, funny, and some just downright disgusting, to be quite honest with you. So let's get into that. Oh. We're going to be discussing the tail incident now. If you want to skip, I totally understand. We're going to be naming the specific crime, essentially. So, of course, content warning, we will be making mentions of SA. But essentially, five weeks ago, it was announced that tail would be removed from NCT due to being accused of crimes of a sexual nature. Now, of course, at the time, we didn't know much. That was basically the extent of it, with SM Entertainment even commenting, as we were assessing the facts related to the matter, we recognized the severity of the situation and determined that Tae can no longer continue his activities with the team, of course, NCT. After discussing with Tae, we have decided on his departure from the group. They basically said he is fully cooperating with the police investigation. And of course, they apologize for the concern and distress caused by their artist. Move forward to now, the accused crime has been revealed. So apparently the victim was intoxicated and the crime, of course, of a sexual nature would have been done allegedly with two of his friends. According to the report, after Ted was investigated by the Bangbe pol police station in Seoul, he was transferred to the Seoul Central District Prosecutor's Office on September 12th. So apparently his two friends were not celebrities. So they're saying he could face more than seven years in jail if convicted of this. With SM Entertainment commenting on the report by Chosun Ilbo saying, it is difficult to comment as the matter is currently under investigation. So they don't have anything to say. Naturally, the thought is absolutely vile and disgusting i mean i don't even i don't even want to read responses to this because like how much more they're disgusted some netizens however have been discussing sm's response to this so far so there's an article titled is this why sm entertainment kept this on the hush hush because if we remember like this kind of came out of nowhere there were no rumors beforehand you know usually a company will act after something comes up but they acted before anything even came up like as we read their statement they recognized the severity of the issue and removed him from the group SM never kept the news under wraps. They cut ties and made the crime known as soon as they learned about it. What do they mean by hush hush? This wasn't a crime that SM could handle. SM immediately cut ties. Is the term hush hush correct? Once they cut ties with him, they were no longer obligated to talk about his crime. Sai, is it so difficult not to be a monster? SM did their part. Look at how they cut him off when they usually keep their artists. There is no reason to blame SM. Anyways, what a crazy bastard. What did SM keep under wraps? I, I just feel bad for their fans. Shouldn't the title be, is this why SM cut him off so fast? SM cut him off right away. What is there for them to keep on the hush-hush? So of course, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Of course, I'll keep you updated as this moves forward. New Jean's parents have spoken out once again, as reported by Ilgan Sports. If you remember back to New Jean's emergency live stream, Hani's claims of being ignored or, be, or, or basically another group being told by their manager to ignore her went super viral. And we've talked about it plenty of times, but essentially they reviewed CCTV footage and they just couldn't tell what happened because apparently the CCTV footage can't record audio. So they couldn't really tell that someone is being told to ignore someone else. Well, now New Jean's parents are claiming that Hype has deleted the CCTV footage of the event. 
How can they claim that the problematic incident just happened to be deleted when they left the footage of Honey greeting the members from the other group untouched? So the parents are claiming they only showed us about 8 seconds of footage of Honey greeting another artist while claiming that the important footage of the artist and the manager coming out afterwards was all deleted. It's ridiculous. Why would they only keep the scenes that don't matter? It felt disrespectful and unpleasant. So in response to this CCD footage doesn't have sound claim, a parent responded, even without sound, can't you understand? And the atmosphere, gestures, and context of the situation. I also suggested that they should have allowed us to view all the footage from the date. They responded that they had already searched a month's worth of footage. I found that answer ridiculous. I questioned why they were looking for footage from other dates when we specifically mentioned a certain date. I continued to feel that their responses were increasingly strange. The parents also recount how CEO Kim Ji Young was crying in front of them and the members. It was very shocking for the members who lack social experience to see the CEO show such an emotional reaction especially in a discussion about various issues when they aren't even close yet might make them feel guilty moreover they were discussing the harm they had experienced in fact one of the members cried and said why are you making us the bad guys so the mother said you're at an age where you should be in school and we're sorry that you have to go through this as parents the parents then go on to talk about the leaking of new jeans pre-debut videos so one of the parents brought this up to the new ceo kim jong two days later they received a response basically saying that the fans had filed a criminal complaint against the media outlet and source music who are the ones who released the footage, and that we could consider waiting for the results. I found that quite absurd. So it seems the CEO was basically telling them that, you know, the members could file a lawsuit against the media outlet for violating their right to publicity. However, we should also consider that pursuing such a procedure against a media company might be viewed negatively. Furthermore, it stated that without objective evidence regarding the leak, our chances of winning might not be high. It also mentioned that Adore had sent an official letter to Source Music and the media outlet in August but received no response. It pointed out that there are no criminal penalties for violations of publicity rights and that even if we sue source music and receive a no charge disposition it could be used against us so basically the email says that because fans already filed criminal complaints that they could just wait it out i don't understand how they can say there are no criminal penalties and then tell us to wait for the outcome of the fans complaints at the same time despite all these considerations they offered to provide resources necessary for the new jeans members to proceed with the lawsuit if they wished i find this completely contradictory and non Sensical. Now, of course, it comes as no surprise that the New Jeans members and New Jeans members' parents are not happy with Adore's new management. During this time, we have raised various issues with the new Adore management, including this one, and have engaged in numerous discussions. However, nothing has been resolved over the past few months, and I am now in a state of near despair and concern for the future. All we can do at this point is hold on to the belief that the truth will prevail. Since lives cannot last forever, we have faith that the truth will eventually come to light even if it takes time. And now, of course, New Jean's parents did this interview with Ilgan Sports. So it was interesting to see that Belift actually responded to this. This is in response to Ilgan Sports. We would like to inform you about today's Ilgan Sports article. They essentially vehemently deny what Honey expressed happened, that Eilid's manager never once told Eilid to ignore Honey, even going as far as asking for an apology from her. Now, this, of course, is quite a lengthy statement, but let's read some of it. So in regards to a manager telling a group to ignore Honey, Eilid's manager, Klus Hongwon, has never instructed the members to ignore New Jeans. Eilid members have also never ignored the New Jeans members. This is proven through an investigation that was held on June 13th at the behest of New Jeans' parents. The groups were only ever in the same space on May 27th for five minutes and we have footage of islet members bowing to the new jeans member 90 degrees so they're basically saying on august 14th they reviewed the footage with minhee jin's team but they're saying that the incident occurred after the video that they were reviewing basically saying that there's another video however according to the security company this claim is problematic because the video retention period of 30 days had already expired making it impossible to secure any additional footage so the parents are saying that hype deleted the footage they're saying that there's a 30-day retention period for CCD footage, and it was beyond that period. 
The former CEO site alleged that Hive intentionally deleted the video. Our protocol staff always uses respectful language and titles when interacting with artists, so the very notion that they would say ignore is not consistent with objective facts. So essentially, while the other side is claiming that the video was deleted, this assertion cannot hold since the CCTV does not record audio. From the moment the issue was raised, we have emphasized the importance of behaving courteously towards artists from other labels, and we have sincerely committed to the investigation. However, despite providing all requested explanations, new claims that cannot be substantiated are being introduced, raising suspicions about whether there are ulterior motives behind this. Especially now that the unverified matter is being discussed in a National Assembly audit. So in the last video, we talked about how Honey was summoned to testify as well as Adore's new CEO Kim ji Young at a National Assembly about workplace bullying. So they said that they didn't want to comment on the issue to protect their staff members because of course the staff members are a lot less powerful in comparison to famous artists. Nevertheless, as attempts continue to solidify false narratives as truth, the affected staff member is experiencing extreme unfairness and mental distress. By bringing an issue that should remain in the goodwill domain of personal matters between labels into the public arena, it is the vulnerable protocol staff member who is truly suffering. They're going to basically like imply that they've done their part. They've sent two official responses of their position to adore in, back in August and September. They have made demands for the allegations to stop. A member of New Jeans mentioned this matter in a live event, leading us to request an apology from that member and the adore label, but we have yet to receive a response. We clearly state if this issue continues to harm the honor of our company, the artists and the staff, we will explore all possible means to address it. Now the response to this, of course, I've seen a lot of people being absolutely appalled at the fact that I would have once again been dragged into this because originally honey did not mention which group ignored her though it was like unofficially announced that it was eyelids manager but i've definitely seen some responses along the lines of like why why name eyelid in this here's what some k netizens think of course this is these are just some perspectives not all but the fact that they have videos of everything except that part where they didn't greet honey is honestly bull New Jeans fighting, people still believe this company with this hajigi they did. So Doors artists will just keep on being bullied by Belift Lab and they let Hybe resolve all their issues. So how is Adore ever going to make it? Kim ji sounds like such a tiring person. The fact that they have zero proof of them ever protecting New Jeans is insane. Send it to the forensics. Goosebumps. Her, this one is too much. Wow, they definitely had that ignore them footage. I mean, as always, let me know what you think. I feel as though this is just more back and forth you know he said she said i feel as though we were all expecting something really big on the 25th of september and that just didn't happen so now it's just more dragging out this happened someone denying that this happened do you know what i mean but of course let me know your thoughts Let's talk about 21 because they recently held their welcome back concerts in Seoul and I'm totally not bitter and angry that I wasn't there. <laughs> it seems a ton of K-pop groups and soloists sent messages of support, including Baby Monster who actually opened for the group. <gasps> that is so rare in K-pop, but very much a welcome thing, I believe. Mm. I, I'm, I'm, like, I'm having like flashbacks of like Vicha opening for twice and people being like, no. But um, this seems welcome. <laughs> Ahyun said, Black Ducks, are you ready? Okay. <laughs> oh my God. I love Baby Monster's energy. I think it's great that they opened for 21. I mean, but I mean, there were actually videos of all these K pop groups sending messages to 21. This tweet outlines them Baby Monster, New Jeans, Ive, Espa, Kiss of Life, G Idol, Stray Kids, IU, Boy Next Door, Treasure Twice, G Dragon. Zico. Then here's an example video. Pharrell? <laughs> what? I'm not surprised. It's 21. But in the list, some people noticed that black pink was nowhere to be found. And some people took issue with this. You know, you have all of these artists, some art, a lot of artists not even from YG Entertainment, sending messages of support, including Baby Monster, but where's black pink? So this tweet has some screenshots for us. They want that black pink validation so bad. They paved the way for black pink and they didn't even congratulate them. OMG. Why is there no black pink? I think CL doesn't want to. <laughs> now, why is that a missing shoe? CL tried to throw it at Jenny. <laughs>
not gonna lie, Blackpink is so disrespectful for this. Where is Blackpink? But then Jenny was actually at the 21 concert. There's so many clips of her at the concert. She even posted it on her instagram so there is the stage there's her 21 light stick her 21 merch the proof is in the pudding guys here again jenny at the oh jenny at the 21 concert just dancing and having fun and you know what? I actually predicted this because as I woke up from a specific dream, I saw that Jenny was at the concert. And this is the dream that I had, okay? So <laughs> I was both Rose's daughter and Jesus' daughter. But then I was also holding myself as their daughter. But they were there. Lisa had a contract at the table and I got berated for talking during the presentation. I said it was my contract in Korean to be funny. It was a, like an LVMH contract. She also had like her visa out. I was like, oh, hmm. <laughs> what if? Um... But then Lisa talked during the presentation and they all laughed because it's Lisa. She was allowed to. But I being the investigator that I am because I knew people, you know, in my real life outside of this dream, I knew people were like, where's Blackpink in the 21 messages? I decided to ask her if she saw clips of the 21 concerts and she said yes excitedly. And I asked Rose too, same thing. So don't worry. This is what I wrote at like 1 a.m. <laughs> so don't worry, there's no beef there, just way too rich. <laughs> I literally woke up from this dream super tired and I just started typing away. <laughs> Rose actually carried me, <laughs> carried me into a restaurant. And I asked her to fix my financial problems at dinner, um, but ultimately I'm still broke. Then I was Chapel Roan surviving a zombie apocalypse. So I literally predicted that there was no beef. Literally writing, there's no beef there, just too rich. <laughs> because Jenny went to the concert, so that explains her part. But I jumped at the other three members who weren't there, further explaining that there's no beef. So you know, all is right in the world because for so long, people have thought there's beef between 21 and Blackpink, that they literally hate each other. And then Jenny is literally at the 21 concert. And she wasn't the only one there were so many famous people there you know what and i'm actually mad because all these famous people are the reason us regular folks couldn't get tickets i don't even have a passport so of course g-dragon was there and there's multiple days of this concert speaking of g-dragon there's this clip of baby monster that i forgot to include but they basically spot g-dragon and they internally lose it like you can just tell that they're huge fans and they absolutely lose it seven gummy and Taesong. oh here's even a picture of jenny with 21 by the way 21 big bang winner icon gummy seven. Oh, in this clip jenny is absent <laughs> and news articles are like was she trying to avoid g-dragon key from shiny was there <laughs> 21 day two soul concert key from shiny forgetting he was on the dance cam there's even entire threads of celebrities attending at least listen okay 21 inspired everyone like here's winter with 21 new jeans <laughs> Not 21's concert attendees having a better lineup than most K-pop award shows. I can't breathe. <laughs> and of course, people were so happy to have that second gen performance energy back. K-pop since I was saying Baby Monster were doing too much on stage would have never survived the second gen 21 era because this is how they perform. I don't care. I want them to go full out. I'm going to a concert, not a funeral. <sighs> This is so hard for me. Like, I don't think you guys understand. Like, I was so upset. I even told my mom and she was like, were you supposed to go? Uh, in theory, yeah. Like, I don't have something against difficult choreography, but a concert should be like this, loud singing together without worrying about anything. <laughs> I can't. I can't watch any of these fan cams. I just can't. Ugly will make me sob. I, I can't. Is Oh my god, not it hurts. It hurts is gonna make me sob too. Can you hear the pain in Bum's voice? That's what I've been saying! <laughs> the pain of a woman who was forced to delete her love confection to her real husband even though... <laughs> How does it feel to live my dream? <sighs> Sore with all that stuff. I mean... It's like a dream come true, even though I wasn't there to experience it. But like 21 and Blackpink are totally fine. There's no beef. I predicted it in my dream in case you were curious about the other three members. I hope YG sees the success and decide to come a little bit closer <laughs> or I get my passport. My passport is 20 days late. Like it's been 40 days since I applied to get my passport. 
It's just not here. I don't get it. Anyways, let me know what you think about all that. If you went, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> I'm not in the mental state right now to hear about this. I'm editing right now, but look at my desktop. This is my new background. This is my old background. Let's move on to K-pop shenanigans, which are basically fun little things that have happened in K-pop recently and or quick news. If I don't talk about Essa Karina styling issues at least once a month, then there's something wrong in this universe. Fans are once again calling out Espa's stylist because she had a dress that was too short so we could see her, you know, pulling it down. And then fans are saying that Karina may have noticed someone trying to film her inappropriately when she was crouched down. So here she is crouched down and then it almost looks like she's mad right that's what people are mentioning but this isn't the first time she's been put in something that's either dangerous or painful or <laughs> dangerous dangerous and painful or just straight up uncomfortable due to its length so new jeans eta has been climbing the charts and people are attributing this to a streamer named jason oh this wasn't even some forced virality created by international fans. It's from this popular American streamer. He loves New Jeans, so he's always playing their songs on his streams, and it went viral like that. So even other streamers have been spreading this, and it became a trend. I don't personally follow him, but I've definitely, like, <laughs> I know Sa, and I always, like, see them together, and I don't understand it, but it's interesting. Halle Belly broke up with DDG, and people are blaming Rosé. They're blaming the Rosé curse. Oh, Rosé, you did it again because every time she's pictured with somebody in a relationship they end up breaking up and it's a it's a lore that goes quite deep affecting Gigi Hadid and Zayn Malik Florence Pugh and Zach Braff Kendall Jenner and Devin Booker Taylor Swift and Joe Owen Bella Porch even got divorced for God's sakes. But unfortunately, this time, it was an edited picture. So it's not real. A singer named Ipsita is gaining traction because her music video contains a lot of very similar scenes to other K-pop music videos. This random woman plagiarized Ives I am music video where I'm crying. And you guessed it, she jumps out. So this whole music video features actually a lot of scenes from different K-pop groups. This random woman plagiarized Blackpink's Pink Venom music video where I'm crying. Espa too. Let's check out more similarities. INVU, okay. Twice has set me free. Pink Venom, fake love. Oh wow. And there was definitely Espa in there for sure too. Now, if we check out the description of this music video, it basically says, this one's inspired by K-pop music videos by some extraordinary female groups and artists. We wanted to recreate and play with the worlds they've built, introducing them to India for the first time. This one is sure to make you groove, are you in? So I think some people aren't super buying it because they're saying, well, it also copies BTS's fake love. Like, was this written after the fact? Like, what's going on here? I, it's definitely not the first time I've seen this where like K-pop music videos, multiple of them are copied in another music video and then it's just written in the description like, oh, inspired by. But I'm curious about like the ethics of that. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. I missed a couple of things. You know that guy that sings to celebrities? Well, he got Blackpink's Lisa. Armageddon by Aspa, Chill Kill by Red Velvet, and Dreamscape by NCT Dream are not on Spotify currently. The reason unknown, but you can't find it. Jenny is apparently going to be promoting Mantra on music shows. Let's move on to things I've been enjoying recently. Um, have you guys heard Adela from Dream Academy, her new song, Homewreck? I've been really enjoying that song. I've been hearing it all over TikTok and it's been stuck in my head. Also, Emily, also from Dream Academy, I believe did the choreography for this. And it's really cute as well, like the chorus. But it's a really addictive song. Also, I watched the final season of The Umbrella Academy. Like, it was bad, but like... I don't know. There's like some elements that like I really didn't hate, okay? Like but like yeah, I can see how it was bad. What else? I've been really enjoying diffusers. I guess that's it. That's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to like, comment and share this video with friends you don't have. These are the lovely individuals who help support my channel on a monthly basis. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. As for me, I'm going to get going so I'll see you guys next time. Bye.